with where, where you are. So has anybody thought about the building or comfortable we feel uh, the energy that it takes? Everybody is speaking about environmental impact and climate change. But very few people sit down in a room and can realize the amount of energy that is devoted to keep us more comfortable than maybe we need. The starting high, very high ceiling we have. So a lot of waste energy to to heat up the air that we don't use. So this is today part of my goal. It's not just to speak about technology, it's also to raise a little bit the awareness of how we use. So uh, why buildings are important? This is not the only building in the world, by, by the way. Uh, in the US, if we found the total commercial residential building, 40% of the total energy goes to supply the energy required just for those buildings. And commercial buildings, uh, in the, according to the Department of Energy category, uh, include hotels, hospitals, office buildings, retail, um, and uh, also schools, educational buildings. A lot of energy goes to supply the energy to those buildings, of which I don't know if you can see the slides very well, but I'm telling you that in average, 36% 36% of that total energy goes to space heating, and another 15% goes to ventilation and air conditioning systems. So around, I put there 40, but in reality, between 40 and 50% go to make us comfortable. Uh, that means a lot of carbon dioxide, it means a lot of electricity, it means a lot of resources. Uh, in buildings also we consume a lot of materials to build them. So there is a lot to think about the way we live and also a lot to do about the topic. Uh, this is not new. <laughs> Since I have been around the engineering world, uh, about 1990, they were starting speaking about environmental issues and energy awareness and so on. Since that time, 1990, 1999, around 1999, um, even in spite of all those topics, the energy consumption in buildings increased 8% instead of decreasing 8%. This is according to, uh, at least the, in, in the US, according to the um, Department of Energy database. Uh, the good news is there are a lot of efforts by a lot of associations that give, provide guidelines to move the energy down, to reverse the tendency. And even there are a lot of guidelines towards net zero energy. That include, obviously, uh, supply, demand, and energy storage, thermal and electric energy storage within the buildings. So, uh, there has been a lot of work, uh, private companies, universities, uh, in order to go and do research and demonstration in every possible component that has to do with reducing the energy in buildings, but not just reducing it to the, to, to the lowest level, but also uh, allowing buildings to get net zero. And part of it, I'm not going to speak about each topic, we can speak later on, part of it has to do with improved designs. Um, so far, majority of the designs have been ad hoc designs, so improving the number of tools available um, to the architectural engineering design firms so as to take into consideration every single aspect in, inside the building um, to include better, uh, more efficient equipment is the second one. Once you have reduced what we call the load or the energy demand in the building, it, it is commissioned according to what it was designed and operate it according to what it was designed with the state of the art tools of which a little bit I'm going to speak uh, in the next slide. And finally, once you get as much reduction as you can and you operate it to maintain the building as designed, you include, you could include um, energy supply technologies, including solar thermal um, 
uh, solar, solar energy, in some cases wind, but it, it, it's not proven to be very efficient again for several reasons. Once you have the building, one of the major drawbacks with buildings is that it can be designed tremendously well. It starts operation, you forget about the design, and immediately degrades performance because the equipment degrades and because it's not operated as designed. No, no, nobody takes care of that. Uh, fortunately, each one of these have been worked, and there are solutions for each one of these. The, one of the problems is these solutions are very difficult or very expensive to implement and to retrofit in all the buildings. The minor, minor percentage of the buildings are new. So one of the challenges is how to retrofit buildings because they will continue to be here for hundreds of years and uh, how to make it affordable. Okay? So I'm going to include three or four topics depending on the time I'm going to speak about each one of these. Building management systems. I'm pretty sure that this building has a building management system. In general, every large building has building management system. They allow to visualize the data in buildings. Uh, they allow simple controls at the high level, such as manage schedules, turn on and off the equipment. And it provides a first level of good ed indicators to building managers and building owners of what to do with the equipment. But it doesn't provide advanced control. That is, for instance, predicting what happens tomorrow with the weather, with the electricity, with the prices, with the schedule, and control the building according to those parameters. Part of some research work or work on which I have been involved, they have to do with adding this advanced control based on model predictive controls to the buildings. Um, so it works the following way. Uh, you have external communications with weather, uh, forecast, um, with building load forecast. Uh, it has a model of the building. And what it does is optimizes the performance. And through the building management system, provides the set points to each one of the equipment types that you have in your building to have the optimized performance. And you correct it every time. You collect data and correct it. So it's a prediction, correction, based on forecast. This has worked tremendously well. Drawback here that I was to mention are the following. We have external communication, so we have to involve the cybersecurity people. We have to have building management systems, so small buildings that cannot afford building management systems may have a problem. We have a model of the building. It takes one or two PhDs for several months to build a model of the building and to maintain the model of the building if some of you have been having building models of the building. Imagine this is a room. Imagine what everything that is behind on the roof, it, 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 the technology works, it needs a scalable approach to this technology. Other type of technologies, I am looking at the, uh, the time, other type of technologies that we have been working on and that has to be, to do very, very successful is building diagnostics of top of, on top of the building energy management <coughs> system. And diagnostics meaning for each equipment type, you have, you may have chillers, rooftops, uh, you have pumps everywhere, some fans everywhere. Build up the model or the understanding of that equipment and compare performance against what is the reality. And um, have indicators when it's beyond performance. It helps for fall detection, but it also helps to identify all uh, of performance, for instance, if your equipment is working below the performance that is expected, and so somebody can go and check the equipment. So this is all proved. Again, the challenge that we all have is to make these technologies available and scalable as a solution. Okay, and I leave it here. <laughs> I have more insights, but I live it here. I'm taking the time, so I'll give um, time for questions. Sure.